While your motor oil doesn't need any additives, what about your diesel fuel? Hi, I'm Lake, the motor oil geek. Let's analyze some popular diesel fuel additives to see if any of them really make a difference. Andrew from the Repair Geek channel sent us several popular diesel fuel additives to analyze and test. So let's start with the chemical analysis to see what that shows. So we ran several lab tests on each of these five different products Andrew sent us. We ran fuel dilution. Now it's an additive, but we wanted to see how much carrier fluid is in the additive and how that might affect fuel dilution. Because Fuel dilution is a problem, and sometimes we see higher fuel dilution when customers are using an additive. We want to make sure the fuel additive isn't increasing fuel dilution and maybe lowering the viscosity of the oil in service, because viscosity is the most important characteristic of any lubricant. We don't want to hurt the viscosity by trying to help our fuel inadvertently. So what makes it a good idea to use an additive in your diesel fuel anyway? Well, here in the US, diesel fuel has almost no detergents and ultra low sulfur diesel has less lubricity than higher sulfur diesel. That change in lubricity since 2007 has actually caused a lot of issues for older style pental diesel fuel injectors. Because of that, additives that could replace that lost lubricity have become very popular. The gas station shelves and the parts store shelves are full of additives to fix your diesel fuel. The question is... We also check for water because diesel fuel is supposed to be clean and bright. There's not supposed to be any water contamination in the fuel. It's a big problem if you have water in your diesel fuel or your diesel fuel additive. We also ran the spectral metal analysis on all of these additives to see, are there any ash containing chemicals within the product? A higher level of ash is going to lead to more frequent DPF regions. In some engines, the more often it regions, the higher the fuel dilution goes, which we just said, Fuel dilution is the enemy of your oil, so you don't want to put something in your fuel that could actually cause the DPF to region more frequently. That'd be a bad thing. And as we can see, there's a big difference in the type and the amount of carrier fluid in each of these additives, which is affecting the fuel dilution from just doing this simple test. The highest one is the arch oil at almost 3%, whereas the standardine is the lowest at less than 0.2%. So it's a big difference here in the amount of carrier fluid, and that probably has a lot to do with the treat rate. Each of these products had a different treat rate, some pretty high, some pretty low. So I'm sure that's factoring in to some of these results. When we look beyond that, Fortunately, all of them were negative for water, so there's nothing there in terms of water, which is excellent. But when we look at the spectral metal analysis, we see some pretty key differences here between the products. Potassium is showing up in two of these products, and that's pretty typical here at Speed Diagnostics when we're doing used oil analysis on diesel trucks. We can see when someone is using one of these products that contains potassium in the fuel because there's always a certain level of fuel dilution getting into the oil and when that fuel has a potassium-based additive in it guess what we can see it in the used oil and these results here match up to our real world experiences let me just say i don't like fuel additives or oil additives for that matter that contain potassium Here's why. Potassium is also an additive in coolant. So when you have a coolant leak, typically one of the early warning signs of a head gasket leak or something like that are trace levels of potassium. If your fuel additive contains potassium, it's gonna raise that potassium level, which could mask or hide 
a potential head gasket leak or another coolant leak problem until it becomes more severe. That's the reason why I don't like any additive that contains potassium. You don't want that false positive or that masking effect that potassium can bring if it's not coming from the source that could be the problem. Top tier isn't just for gasoline. There's actually a top tier diesel fuel spec as well. And in 2025, there's an update to that top tier spec to increase detergency, but also improve cleanliness. You see, over 90% of all diesel fuel related failures are due to contamination. So proper filtration of your diesel fuel is really important. For a deeper dive about fuel filtration, leave a comment below to let me know. Let's take a little closer look at these results. The two additives that contain potassium are the Hot Shots Everyday Treatment and the XPD All-in-One. The others don't contain potassium. Oddly enough, the Arch Oil had a ton of iron in it. I don't think this really contained iron, but we ran the sample again and it showed up again. So I'm not really sure where over a thousand parts per million of iron came from. This might just be an anomaly of that one bottle we had. These are just the spectral metal analysis and the fuel dilution. Let's take a look at the IR results, that chemical fingerprint, and see what other differences show up on that. So with these IR traces, we're really looking at two key areas. The carrier fluid is going to be on the left-hand side, and we put an arrow to kind of point that out. And then the chemical fingerprint where the active chemistry is going to be on the right hand side. As we scroll through these results, we see a pretty big difference between the carrier fluid and the additive package. Each of these additives is unique. Not a one of them is the same. With that being said, let's see how different these products actually perform. To do that, we need to send these samples for third party independent validation. And we're going to have them run two tests, two of the exact same tests that are in the ASTM fuel standard. You see, ASTM actually has standards here in the U.S. that are applied around the world as well for both gasoline and diesel. And two of those tests that are part of the diesel fuel standard are cetane and lubricity. So let's see if these additives can improve the performance of the fuel in both lubricity and cetane. ASTM does more than just set diesel fuel standards. They also set standards for gasoline and for lubricants, which is why you're going to be seeing more about ASTM standards on this channel. The lubricity test is basically a high frequency reciprocating rig where it can measure the ball and wear scar. So the maximum wear scar allowed by the ASTM fuel spec for regular pump diesel is 520. And we see that our base fuel just bought locally is below that 520. With the addition of all but one of these additives, we saw a reduction in the size of that wear scar. Now the one product, the Standardine Performance Formula, we saw a slight increase in the wear scar, but it was still below the ASTM maximum wear scar of 520. So it didn't push it outside of the range, but that was kind of concerning that it actually made the wear scar bigger as opposed to smaller. Now the biggest improvement came from the XPD formula. It cut it in half. So that was a major improvement in terms of reducing that wear scar with the XPD. All of the other products made improvement as well. So of the five, four did a really good job. One did an exceptional job of improving lubricity. Speaking of sulfur, the sulfur level in diesel fuels varies wildly around the world. Regular sulfur diesel is actually 5,000 parts per million of sulfur. Low sulfur diesel is 500 parts per million and ultra low sulfur diesel is 15 parts per million or even less in some places. So depending upon where you are in the world, the level of sulfur 
in your diesel fuel can vary wildly, which has an impact on your fuel system as well as the performance of the motor oil. Fun fact, in Europe, there's more than just one grade of diesel fuel. That's right, when you go to the pump, there's actually two grades, standard and premium diesel that has those extra additives already in it. Now let's take a look at how the cetane improvement came out because cetane is also a really important characteristic of the fuel. So when you increase cetane, you're improving the combustion quality of the fuel. That's gonna reduce soot and that's really important because the more soot that's generated, the more often the DPF is gonna regen, the more issues you can have with the EGR system. So you want a better, cleaner combustion. You want less soot. That's gonna extend oil life as well. So cetane is equally important to the performance and durability of the engine as lubricity. You want good lubricity, you want good cetane in order to have good engine life. And each of these products did a good job of improving the cetane, even though the base fuel was already almost 10 numbers higher than the minimum for Texas, we saw up to a six cetane increase with the power service product. So that one did exceptional in terms of increasing the cetane. Now all of them did a pretty good job and moved it up. In reviewing all the chemical analysis and this test data, I see one clear winner here. That's the power service. And the reason for that is it does not contain any potassium. So it did a good job in terms of improving lubricity. That was a plus. It did the best job in terms of improving cetane. And it didn't really have a big increase in fuel dilution. And like I said, there's no potassium. There's no false positive for something that could confuse or hide a potential coolant leak in the engine. For those reasons, if I'm picking one of these, I'm picking the power service Oddly enough, it's also the only one of these additives that's actually endorsed by Cummins. So imagine that, the guys at Cummins have probably done a lot of testing and they say, hey, we like this one too because it does all good things without anything negative. And that's the biggest thing. Additives can sometimes be helpful, but you don't want an unintended negative consequence. If you remember from our video we did about premium fuel, we saw that premium fuels have a different additive package than regular fuels. So this could be a great way to see, can an additive make a difference? Are all premium fuels the same? If you wanna know, leave a comment below. As always, thank you so much for watching and for your comments and for supporting us. We couldn't do this without you, the viewer. If you wanna see more, check out one of these and we'll see you next time.